My name is Tanya Ruiz. I'm chef owner of Tomate Fresh Kitchen. I'm from Guatemala, so a lot of my flavors uh, and the herbs that I use are mainly what we use in Guatemala, our way of cooking. The only difference in Guatemala, we don't make spicy food. That's like a, a side dish that we incorporate while we're eating. My husband, he's from Mexico, from Michoacan, and so I would always try to replicate the you know, Mexican dishes and I was always incorporating a little bit of my herbs, you know, so that's why you get like all these different flavors in my food that you don't necessarily get in other restaurants. It's gourmet because it's not flavors that you get uh, in different places. And it's street food because it's a small place. It's carry out its tacos, burritos, gorditas, which are street food, but it's the flavors that are inside of the fillings that makes it gourmet, like um, my duck with um, chile morita sauce and pomegranate. Um, that's something very different that you don't see anywhere else. I've always liked it being in the kitchen. I liked helping, I liked cooking, but I, I never thought of it as a, a career, you know, but I did work in restaurants, and so the options were, were pretty limited. You know, nobody was talking about chefs back then and what they could do or, or bringing non-traditional items to the forefront. And I thought, well, why not, you know? Um, there's so much stuff that we can do. One of the reasons why I um, wanted to get into culinary schools because I remember going to restaurants, Mexican restaurants, and asking for vegetarian options. And the most of it was rice, beans, and lettuce, and tomatoes. And I thought, well, with all the salsas that we make and, you know, all these different vegetables, there's got to be a better way to incorporate all of that together to make something tastier. And that was like something that I always had in the back of my mind that I wanted to do. So what happened one day, I was working at this one restaurant and they cut my hours. And um, we were going a little bit into the recession. So I, I got my husband, what do we what do I do now, you know? So I started going to factories and I would make lunch boxes and I would sell them. And then from there, I got the idea of going to culinary school and doing something better from what I love to do. I was working in many kitchens, but as a woman, it's hard to, to grow up and be a, a sous chef or a chef at a restaurant. I was really bothered by all of this, so I started making sorbets at farmer's markets. I felt... I was beginning and I, I just needed like a stepping stone to see what I could do, where my flavors would go, how people would react to my flavors. And then it started getting cold and I told my husband, what are we done now, right? I, I love going to the farmer's market, but nobody wants to eat sorbets, you know, when it's cold. And he's like, well, think about what you want to do. And I'm like, I don't want to do tacos. I want something simple, something different, grab and go. And I thought of empanadas and I thought of my mother's recipe. So I came and I started tweaking it so that I could bake them instead of frying them until I got the recipe that I wanted. And from there it started, we would gather the uh, produce from the farmer's markets and make fillings. And then that's what started it all. So from there we started doing the Andersonville, the, um, the Glenwood Market, the Evanston Indoor Market. And then those came out to be in the summertime for outdoor markets. One day I just happened to be coming down on Noy Street and I, I saw this little place with a four rent and I called and the rest is history from there. Well, money was, was a challenge. We didn't have money to start up with. We opened up with whatever we were making at the farmer's market. We would buy little bits and pieces of equipment, um, like the pots and pans were all from my house. We really just started with almost nothing. We didn't have money for the next month's rent. We were expecting to have, like, you know, a few people coming in. And, you know, how they say, like, your first two years, sometimes it's, it's negative. And it just so happened that the first day we opened up, we had a line out the door. All the way until, like, from 10 to 3.30, I remember. And that whole, that whole month, we just, we couldn't keep up. We couldn't keep up, so that was amazing. 
I think people like it because it's it's a small place. It's family owned. Uh, Polo knows people's names and what they like to order. It's a family atmosphere, friendly atmosphere. Everybody here has a good vibe and that comes out in our food as well. So we make our rice here, we make our beans here, all the fillings, everything we do. Every day people see us and we're cutting, we're prepping because it goes so fast so you know you're getting fresh food. And everything we make is with a lot of love. So Everything's been amazing. It's been an amazing adventure from how we started selling our empanadas, uh, working in, in different kitchens, because that really gave me the, the push and the drive to say, you can do it, get out there. <laughs>